Hi, and welcome to Global Financial Bridge. My name is Andre Guillen, and today our goal is to communicate our business performance through the unbiased eyes of our financial statements. Now think about it. That's possibly a contradiction in itself, in that our financial statements should do exactly that. Yet, I think most of us would agree that our financial statements are not in fact designed to be a communication mechanism. So, what we're going to do today is show how in a one-page interactive environment we can combine the income statement, the balance sheet, and those key areas that measure performance and growth in terms of being able to tell a story about our strategy um, based on five key chapters. I hope you enjoy um, our financial communication system as we do. Have a great time. Thank you so much. Our starting point is a set of standard financial statements. In order to convert these statements into an effective communication tool, we simply go into our one-page financial scorecard. What this does is this takes our standard income statement that we're all familiar with, our standard balance sheet, but more importantly connects our income statement and our balance sheet to those areas that do two things, namely measure performance as well as our ability to create value. This allows us to convert our financials into a story about our business and our story has essentially five key chapters to it. Namely, chapter one is all about how effective we have grown our business. Then in chapter two, we look at chapter one's growth and see how that has created superior profitability. Chapter three is all about working capital. So now that helps us connect the balance sheet into our story. And then chapter four talks about cash and how the previous chapters have impacted our positive or negative cash flows and then lastly in chapter five we talk about value as we said performance and value and value as measured by the return that we get for our invested dollar okay so let's have a quick look at our business we've noticed in chapter one that our business has grown by 23 percent well is this superior growth or not from a chapter two or profitability viewpoint we noticed that previously our Profitability was 13 cents per revenue dollar, slightly in decline to 12 cents. So maybe there's some dysfunction between how we're growing our business and how we're converting that into superior profitability. Chapter 3 tells us about a fairly unique measure in the sense of what is the working capital consumption per revenue dollar. Well, last period or last year, we consumed 14 cents or we required 14 cents worth of working capital per revenue dollar. Today we require 20 cents worth of an investment in our working capital per revenue dollar. And then chapter 4 says, well, hang on guys, if you've grown your business by 23%, you're not really getting superior profitability out of it and your working capital has increased. Well, unfortunately, the result of all of these areas is negative cash flow. And then lastly, in chapter 5, the return on our invested dollar used to be about close to 31 cents return in the invested dollar. Now it's 24 cents return. So automatically, in a fairly quick way, we can identify potential dysfunctions between how we're growing our business and converting it into superior profitability, what's happening to our working capital, is this good or bad for cash, and have we actually created uh, a positive return for our owners or not. What we really want to identify is the impact of potential strategy. And one of the things that this business wanted to do was actually grow its business not by 23%, by 30%. So let's quickly go and identify the effect of that additional growth. So what I'll do is I'll move to revenue growth, key in the 30% goal, and automatically our financial statements have all been modified with that new growth rate. So is this potentially a value creation strategy or is this a value destruction strategy? Once again, this is very difficult to determine. 
So the way we solve this problem is we simply go to what we call a net change feature. What this does is this isolates the impact of a potential strategy or a decision. The decision here was what would happen if we had to grow our business from 23% to 30%, i.e. we had to grow our business by an additional $200,000. The improvement to our operational profit would be about $49,000. The improvement to our total income statement is about $34,000. As you can see, that improvement flows directly into our balance sheet. So, from a performance way, what is the outcome? Well, that additional 7% growth would improve our profitability by, by just over half a cent per revenue dollar. And uh, the return, that, or the improved return on our invested dollar would be about two cents improvement on the invested dollar. Yet, we would require $6,000 worth of additional cash in order to fund that growth. Why is this happening? Why is it that we cash absorbing when we grow our business? Well, let's have a quick look and see. We simply pop into our cash management environment. And what this shows us is three key areas in order to identify how effective we are at managing cash. The first environment is what is our actual cash flow? Then we look at the sort of what we would call the what if cash flow and then the net impact of doing some. So in other words, what is the net impact of growing our business by some $200,000? As we've seen, it's about a $6,000 negative cash impact. What are the key drivers to this? Automatically, we can notice it's primarily working capital. We need a $30,000 additional investment in our receivables and about a $41,000 additional investment in our inventories, partly offset by the vendor terms that we receive. Okay, so now we get some idea of why our business is a bit cash absorbing when it grows. Let's get out of there and we would return to our original numbers by pressing the scorecard button and the undo button. Okay, so let's quickly go and evaluate chapter two and see why is there this dysfunction between good growth and not being able to translate that into superior profitability. Well, the first area we notice is that our margins have um, gone from 41 cents to 37 cents. So what is the cost of that margin destruction? All I'll do is I'll bring our margins back to what they used to be, and I, that will allow us to identify the cost of that margin destruction. So, bringing our margins back to the f nearly 42 cents per the revenue dollar, and let's quickly go and identify the cost of that margin destruction. We press our net change button, and automatically we notice the fact that our margins have come down by 3.8% or nearly 4%. From an operational viewpoint, cost us $141,000, and from a cash viewpoint, has cost us about $114,000. So that's a really powerful way of identifying what various actions or decisions have impacted our financial performance. Back to our original scorecard. Press the undo button to return to our original numbers. Talking a little bit about working capital. How has working capital impacted our financial performance? We notice the three key elements to what we call working capital. In other words, our receivable, inventories, and payables, i.e. those are the variable components in the balance sheet that pretty much closely trail what's happening with the changes in revenue. So our receivables have grown from uh, 46 days to 55 days. How has that impacted our cash flow? Let's bring our receivables back to 46 days, and we now we can quickly identify the impact to cash. The fact that our receivables have grown by an additional nine days has cost our business $93,000 of cash. In other words, if we still achieve that growth, didn't do anything different, but managed our receivables the same way that we used to manage our receivables, we would have had $93,000 more in the bank today. Back to the scorecard, press the undo button to return to our original numbers. Well, there's various ways in which we can look at cash, and I'm not going to go to go through each one of them today, or at least in this session, we will have some very specific targeted sessions on identifying how to optimize cash, but needless to say, what we do want to do is identify the, uh, those strategies that help us improve our cash and also the structure of our business. And lastly, return on capital. This is an interesting point and um, we're going to do some really great stuff with this, but it's in essence, how we optimize the return on our investment is both through the way that we manage our income statement and our balance sheet. 
And, you know, often I speak to people and say, you know, what's more important in your business? Is it your income statement management or is it your balance sheet management? And, you know, some people say, oh, it's the income statement. Some people say, oh, it's the balance sheet. Well, what this proves to us is they are both equally important. Okay, so now we've got to a point where we have, in fact, identified some clear areas of dysfunction and maybe how we could change the way that we look at our business in order to alleviate some of those areas of dysfunction. But more importantly, what we need to be able to do is to identify the effectiveness of our future strategies. So we've looked at the past, now we need to go into the future. Well, simply I'll exit out of the scorecard and I'll return to our, what we call our loading or data screen. What this allows us to do now is to quickly identify how we're going to translate strategy into future financial performance. I'll click onto that little budget uh, tick box and uh, click onto the budget wizard. Our budget wizard very simply shows the key drivers to our business and now allows us to translate our various strategies into how these drivers are going to impact our future. Well, first of all, we identified based on our marketing plan that we're only going to grow our business by 10%. Okay, we've also identified through our supply chain management system that we're going to improve our direct input costs from 62 cents in the revenue dollar to 61 cents. Um, our variable costs, which are, are primarily you know, sort of direct marketing type environments as or direct promotional type environments as well as maybe commissions will stay roughly at 13 cents. Um, we're going to increase our fixed costs through uh, additional employment, bringing that up to about $450,000. And uh, yes, our depreciation will increase because our capital expenditure is going to increase and we'll show you how we do that in a second. We are going to have, but our average cost of debt will stay the same. Our average taxation rate will stay the same. But we are going to you know, focus on the, our credit systems and bring our receivables days to about 50 days as a first starting point or key objective. Inventories, same story, which is also part of our supply chain program. And we are going to pay our suppliers sooner. Lastly, as we stated, our capital expenditure budget we've defined, which is primarily technology driven, is going to be about $120,000. Okay, so let's update this. And automatically, as you can see, there is your future income statement. There's your future balance sheet. Now we have the ability to uh, click onto that column and go and view our scorecard of the future. So once again, we have our standard income statement, yet we're looking at the future potential income statement, and we're looking at our future balance sheet, and now we can evaluate whether this strategy makes sense. Well, that 10% growth rate will take our uh, profitability from $0.12 cents to $0.13, cents, so that's an improvement, so we, we're quite happy with it. Our working capital is, is on the mens, and we are looking at a positive cash flow of about $272,000, compared to previously having about a $270,000 negative cash flow. And our return on capital is definitely on the upside. Well, we're happy with the strategy. However, what we would like to see is what if we could increase you know, our value offer and maybe sort of squeeze a 2% price improvement through that strategy. What would this look like? Well, gee, that really has a significant impact. So that's now an additional goal that we have for our future. I'm going to update our data set with these changes. And now we have a clean way of looking at our future from both a strategic viewpoint and an actual evaluation of the financial performance in relation to those strategies. So I hope you enjoyed our quick overview of how we can communicate our financial performance really through a one-page interactive environment that becomes fun and, I think, relatively simple that everybody understands. Thank you so much for your time. Have a lovely day. All the best. Bye from Andre again.